If you are new to my channel, you will see many pots that are in the adapted semi-hydroponic setup, the self-watering configuration, where an inner pot is set in an outer mask suspended above the reservoir and using a wicking material to pull the water from the reservoir and into the pot. Then, suddenly you will see some pots that are in the classic semi-hydro setup that has the two drainage holes drilled into a solid pot anything below the drainage holes being the reservoir and no wicking material is needed because the media is the wicking agent and distributes the water up and into the media. These two differences probably prompted the question from Janina Carlona who asked which method do I prefer and why? The answer to your questions Janina Carlona is the following. Most orchids that have to come indoors during the winter months, when my climate does not permit alfresco growing, are in the self-watering setup. The reason for this is because I have no risk of water dripping anywhere where I may miss it and problems arise during the cold temperatures. It is clean and I have never had a problem with water leaking out of the pots. Most orchids that can live outside all year round because they are hardy in my winters are in the semi-hydro setup that has the two drainage holes that make up the reservoir. The reason for that is when it rains, I don't have to worry about any pots flooding. If it doesn't rain, I can flush without having to think about where the water is going, etc. Basically, it's okay for me to make a mess outside when I flush or fertilize. Now, you may have heard that in both scenarios, I have used the word most. Well, as much as I wish I could have uniformity with what stays outdoors and what has to come indoors, there are exceptions, and they are. I keep most of my rescue orchids indoors, and they happen to be in the semi-hydro setup with drainage holes because I can control the water levels, keeping them a smidge drier, etc. Another group of orchids that are indoors during the winter months but do have the drainage holes are gifted orchids that I do not want to play around with, figuring out their lecker ratio, hoping to grow them well. But because during the summer my climate is so dry and these orchids need a lot of humidity around them during their alfresco glam camping months, their configuration helps me with regular misting and at the same time I am not risking a pot from flooding. You will see some outdoor orchids do not fit in the category of semi-hydro with drainage holes, even though they are outdoors all year round. They are in the self-watering configuration because they are enormous. There is no room indoors for them, even if their culture requires warmer temperatures. They have grown to a size that I cannot accommodate. So to maintain their growth during the warmer months of the year, giving them continuous access to water and nutrients, they are in the self-watering configuration. If it has rained a lot or is forecast to rain a lot, I remove these pots from their outer pots so that they don't flood. Then I use the mask to collect rainwater. While I would love to have every orchid in the classic semi-hydro setup with the drainage holes because it would be much cheaper on the wallet as it does not need two pots to make it work, it is not feasible because I move many of my orchids outdoors on the daily during the winter months when there is some sunshine and pockets of warmth. Meanwhile, for the orchids that do have the drainage holes and that do come inside and that I may move outdoors on the occasional sunny winter day, I also have my tags in the pot with the semi-hydro setup placed right by where the drainage holes are. They serve me well as a marker where I have my drainage holes if I have to move them from the shelf. I do tilt them in the opposite direction of the holes to avoid any spillage. The daily winter shuffle happens at a rapid pace and well, thinking about tilting 80 plus pots allows room for error and there's no room for error during the shuffle months. 80 plus orchids go outside when feasible and 80 plus orchids come back inside before the temperatures drop. That makes a total of 160 options where I can make a mistake for the duration of approximately four months. So yeah, that is why I have the self-watering configuration and the classic semi-hydroponic configuration with the two drainage holes making up the reservoir. Pretty much, I like both. Just to reiterate, I don't prefer one configuration over the other. With the exception of, of course, if you've got self-watering, it is a little bit more taxing on the wallet because you need two pots. 
I do hope this answers your question, Janina Carlona. Thank you so much for asking. And anyone else that was wondering why some of my orchids are like this and others are like that, now you know. If you have watched this video and also have a question, ask away. I cannot do this without you, so please like, share, and if you have not subscribed, I would appreciate your vote of confidence with you hitting the subscribe button. Thank you so much. Also, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Wishing you a fabulous day on that one condition, though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.